Welcome to BanjoBenClark.com, your online home for learning how to pick on the banjo, the mandolin, and the guitar. Um, today we are going to learn how to read tab. Okay, so if, even if you don't play banjo, um, this would be a good one to watch. I'm going to do this for all three instruments, but this is a great just theory lesson in general. Um, I teach most of the stuff here on the website. Obviously we have videos, but I have tabs that accompany the videos and the tabs that I have, um, a lot of people have trouble reading those. It's not standard notation. I believe it's a, a better way to teach than standard notation. Calm down out there, all you classical people. I've played nothing but classical piano from when I was four or five all the way up through high school. Okay, so I love standard notation and I can read it. But tabs are just better for uh, bluegrass instruments. So what we're going to do today is break it way down. Okay, and really there's two different things that you need to know on how to read tab. One is um, learning how to put your fingers where it wants you to put your fingers on the left hand. And then the second half, which is perhaps more important, is learning how to count and what the different notes mean. Okay, so we're going to be doing a lot of theory in this lesson. You're going to hang with me. It's, uh, it's good stuff. I make it fun for you and doing some exercises. If you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, here in a little while, I'll ask you to go over to banjobenclark.com. It's the best bang for your buck. Learn how to pick, and I hope that you do that. And thanks to all of you who do support me uh, through that and allows me to put out videos like this each and every week. Let's learn how to read tab on the banjo. Today we're going to learn how to read tab. Now there's a couple things that goes into learning how to read tab. One of those is learning um, where to put our fingers on the fingerboard, okay, and which strings to pick with our right hand. But then the other half, maybe the more important half of learning how to read tab, is learning um, how to count, okay? Now most bluegrass songs, and most songs in general, are in what's called 4-4 time. And that's really easy um, to explain. All that means is that each one of these measures, let's look there, on the tab, we see measure one through measure four. And you see there at the start of measure one, there's a four, four. That means this song is in four, four time. What that means is that no matter what tempo you're going, meaning what speed, it could be a really slow song, it could be Rocky Top going 100 miles an hour, there's still just four beats in each measure. Okay, and we're gonna explain all the different kinds of notes that, um, that we'll use, whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, and also we're going to talk about um, rests and those types of things. So we're going to talk about the timing, and we're going to also learn about how to um, pick the strings and how to put our fingers when reading tab. Um, let's start there for a second. In measure one, I just want to introduce you to the strings of the five-string banjo in its standard G tuning. Okay. And we have five strings, okay? And people often say it looks like the tab is upside down. And at first it does seem like that. I remember when I first started reading tab, I thought this, this is backwards um, because that string is on the bottom line, but I'm playing my top string. It should be flipped around. Well, it may seem like that for a little while, but I promise that you'll um, very soon get over that and you won't even think about it before too long and you'll find that it makes sense because the higher the pitch the higher the tab goes okay let's explain that we've got five strings as i mentioned and not only do they have note names as you can see there at the start of measure one we've got g d g b d okay they also have number names i'll often say and you'll often hear uh, the fifth string or the third string or the second string, okay? So we need to learn that as well. And so it's good to know um, not only which note the string is, but which number it is as well, okay? So that very first note that I have there, measure one, that's a G note. That's this high G string known as your fifth string. Okay, the next note, measure one, is our fourth string. That's our low D string. Measure two, we've got our third string there, which is a G string as well. Now notice we've already had a G string, so what's the difference between these two? They're an octave apart. High octave, low octave. Okay, so third string. That second note, measure two there, is our second string. It's a B string. It's 
So that's a B note. And then measure three, that first note kind of wraps up the five strings that we have on the five string banjo. That's our first string and it's a D note as well. Okay. And then I've just drew coming back down. Okay. You'll notice if you look back at the start of measure one, though we do have five strings on the five string banjo, we only really have three different notes that we play. Look at that. I'm starting from the bottom, reading up from measure one, G, D, G, B, D. So we have two G strings. Those are the same notes, just different octaves, an octave apart. And then we have two D strings. And then we have this one B strings in there. Okay. Now let's talk about um, these different note lengths because we need to know how to count um, so that we can read tab. Starting there in measure five, we're gonna start off with the longest note that there is in music, okay? We're in four, four time. So the longest note is one that could take up the whole measure. Now, how many beats did I say were in each measure in four, four time? That's easy, there's four beats. So we have what's called a whole note. And that's easy to remember because it takes up the whole measure. And as you can see there, a whole note equals four beats. That makes sense, right? We have one note, it's equal to four beats. If we only have four beats in a measure, then that one note in that measure would fill up the whole measure, okay? Now they're easy to rec recognize on tab because they don't have a stem, okay? And it's the same when you're reading standard notation as well. They're just the number. Is just sitting there. As you can see in measure five, I've got a whole note there on the third string, on our G string. And now beneath that note, I'm going to start introducing which finger we're going to play with, with our right hand, okay? So you see that T in the circle? That stands for thumb, okay? So if we were counting, and this I've included the counts beneath each one of these measures, because it's very important that we learn how to count. So no matter what our tempo is, we know that this whole note takes up four beats. And whenever I count, you have two, really two different options. You can say the, the tempo is da, ba, ba, about that fast. You can either count one, two, three, four, or you can divide it up. And this is what I'll often do. And I'll throw an and in between each one of the downbeats. So one and two and three and four and. That's the same thing as just going one, two, three, four. Okay, so just playing measure five, it's very simple. Ready, go. One and two and three and four and. and that's it. We would move on to the next measure, okay? One and two and three and four and bam, we're done. Now measure six is the next note that we need to learn. It's a half note. Now if a whole note gets four beats, what do you think a half note gets? Well, it's there for you to see. It gets two beats, okay? So it takes now two half notes to fill up a full measure of four beats if they get two beats a piece, all right? Now you can recognize those on tab because they have a stem, at least on my tabs, they have a stem that is broken, okay? The stem does not go all the way up to the note. You see the little stem just sticks out beneath the staff right above um, the, cir the circle T there. Okay, so if I was gonna play these two half notes, okay, um, on my G string with my thumb, it would go like this. I'm gonna count and measure ends so that we can establish our tempo. And then I'm going to play these two half notes. One and two and three and ready, go. One and two and three and four and. Okay, pretty simple, huh? That's two half notes. One and two and three and four and. Good job. Now, Whenever we have a note, we also have something that corresponds to it. It's kind of like its cousin, okay? And that's its rest. And a rest is simply space that no notes are played in, 
okay? So just as you have a half note, you can have a half note rest. And all that means is, is that there's a space of two beats, because it's a half note rest, that is going to be stuck in that measure. And that's what happens in measure seven. The first half of the measure, I've got a half note on the G string. And the zero just means that it's open. We're playing no frets. And then we have a two beat rest, a half note rest following it. So this measure would sound like this. Ready, go. One and two and three and four and. Okay. We have a half note. One and two and half note rest, four and. There you go. Now measure eight, I just inverted it so you could see what it sounds like there. That'd be pretty, uh, pretty easy. We're gonna start out with a half note rest and then play the half note on the G string. Sounds like this. One and two and three and ready, go rest. And two and three and four and. All right, not too bad, huh? How about we play measure seven and measure eight together, okay? And when we get to the rest, I don't want you to necessarily kill your strings, mute it. I just did that to let you know that it is a rest, but a rest doesn't always mean that you have to dampen the notes. It just means that there's nothing going on there, okay? It's just filling in the time that has to be there, okay? So measure seven and measure eight together, one and two, and three and ready go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and see how that worked let's now move on to quarter notes this is where it gets quite a bit more interesting 